I'm, I'm horrible in relationships. You would think I'm great, right? But I mean, I suck in relationships like that. But um, <laughs> no, um, I come from that kind of world um, where everything was um, dog eat dog. Um, if you if you had money, if you had jewelry, and if you couldn't defend your stuff or protect it, you were getting took and you were gonna get killed. And um, all my life, I've seen murders and robberies, and I became a part of that. And I. I took um, the choice to become a part of that because when you think about it, I have a brother who's like one of the top um, trauma surgeons in the country. I had a sister that was a teacher before she passed. And so I come from a very um, educated background. I never passed the ninth grade because I was just so entrenched into the street world. I was just very allured to that. That was really what I wanted to be because you saw instant gratification as far as respect was concerned. In the street world, I, I didn't have much patience and that's what I wanted. So. Um, I started getting involved with crime at a young age. My first arrest, I guess I was, what, 10 years old, my first arrest, um, pickpocket, Jocelyn. And so I went to, when I went to the institution, um, I, I realized I'm in this form for all my friends are here. Everybody that saw me in the streets, pickpocketing other guys in different um, boroughs, and um, I got addicted to it even more. So I wasn't afraid to go to jail anymore. And so I became a, a more advanced criminal, so to speak. Um, I remember one day we were in the house, we were robbing somebody's house, and um, I was talking, I thought I was talking to my friend, when I was whispering, I thought I was talking to my friend, and there was someone else in the house, and I thought I was talking to my friend. So, as I told him, I heard somebody, we were both leaving the house, and my friend who thinks he's a professional, he tried to lock the door, but the guy came, opened the door, and blew his brains out right there. Oof. Yeah, and um, I ran. I was um, I was 12. He must have been 14. I ran. I just, because that's what you do. You try to get away. And I ran. And um, and you would think that God, that would just send somebody straight. That same that um, me and my other friends we hooked up a little bit later. Let's get another house. And that's just what it was. It was this is how we lived our life. Um, most of my friends are pretty much dead. Else they got so much time. I'm going to visit some guys tomorrow. And they got, um, they got caught in this Rockefeller law. They got 240 years. One more of my friends got five life sentences. He's only 50. And so um, these, are, these are the people that I go see um, once a month, sometimes twice a month, because these are, these are my friends. These are who we grew up. This is, these are the guys that stayed over their house when, they, when my mother was doing what she was doing. This is just, these are my family, and that's what I do. I go see all my friends. And um, they'd be so um, intrigued to know I'm at this particular type of event talking about the situation when we were talking about, um, I was hearing them talking about these hard laws and helping people when they get out. Um, you know, it's gonna be a real neat trick to do that because those laws was um, the guidelines to put them in there for a long time because the people don't want them to ever come out and still get the $60,000 from them, or us, so to speak. So um, yeah, I'm one of those guys. So I went away in this other prison, um, institution and um, it's called Tryon, so I'm in Tryon, and I'm kind of like a badass guy, so somebody said something, or he pulled at my hat, so I stabbed some guy, and I went to another c correction. Then I went there, I, I got introduced to a gentleman by the name of Bobby Stewart, and he started teaching me how to box, because I thought I was a tough guy. I didn't know anything about being a tough guy, but I thought I was. And so I went there, and um, it was so ironic, he didn't want me to go, because I kept, I kept improving, I broke his nose, and he was a professional fighter, and I'm 12 years old, and, um, so I, um, I had this miraculous, um, this was just um, such an opportunity. I met a gentleman by the name of Custom Model, old Italian man. And um, when I went there, he, he talked to me. He talked to me for two weeks. He was talking, I thought he was, um, I thought he was a pervert because he was saying all these things that I'm beautiful and I can do this. And But when I sparred, I was getting shellacked. So I know I knew there was no way that he would think that I was a good fighter, but he saw something that I still don't see what he saw to this day. I don't know how it worked. And he said, if, I was going to be champ, I was going to do all this stuff, and that's what made me think this is a perv, because where I come from, everybody's trying to, you know, it's a perv, I live in perv city, you know, everybody's trying to do this. No, this is real talk, though, I'm talking to you, man, you know. Um, so, um, I started listening to this Italian guy, and he teaches me to fight, and I'm 14 years old, I win this, I win this national championship, then I win this junior national championship. I'm breaking record, I knock a guy out in eight seconds. How did that happen? And he still told me I was, I was imperfect, I was wrong, I was flawed. So um, 
I didn't know how that worked, and I just started listening. I said, um, when I went back home, I was getting ready to do some more robberies, because every now and then I would go back to Brooklyn and do robberies and come back, because the state was paying them like 150 bucks a month, and that, that wasn't even paying for my pants and my sneakers. So I always went back home and did robberies and came back with nice clothes and told them that my friends gave me these clothes because the older brother can't fit them anymore, something like that, some, some ridiculous story. And um, one day when we were going to um, do another robbery, a friend of mine was telling me, no, you're with those white people, Mike, stay with them. These people love you, Mike. I saw you in this chamber, they love you. So um, to my friend that told me that, me and him was together one day, we went by a dice game, and we, and we know these guys, these are our friends, guys we grew up with, but something was different. I saw them when we looked at the dice game, we didn't gamble, but they looked at each other, and no one said hi. I said, what's up? They always said hi to me, but they didn't talk to him. And um, so we left, and they, um, a week later they told me that um, they killed him. And so they, and my friend saw me and said, Mike, man, you walked off the game with him. I thought that you were killed too. Because I didn't know these guys were having this little um, secret war, because I was just coming back and forth. I didn't know the information. And so um, ever since my friend died, I stayed up there and I never came back and I became successful. And um, I became champion at, at 20 years old, the youngest champion ever. Um, I won titles. I won titles, I had, I had everything in the world, but I still had that darkness in me. I had hundreds of millions, I had money, but I still had that darkness in me. That darkness wasn't out of me yet. And I got in a whole bunch of trouble. I got involved with people who had made me no good. And um, I lost a lot of money. I kept getting lawsuits. I had lawsuits there, lawsuits here, lawsuits here. Now, most of my money I tricked off on lawsuits. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I, you could listen. If I spend two hundred fifty million dollars on girls and trips and clothes, that's nothing to what I did on lawsuits. Okay? So they really got me good with those lawsuits. And but um, it still I still didn't have peace. I sometimes I still had that old darkness from back before. And then um, because you know, of course, my father and mother they're addicts, um, and I'm not fighting anymore and I have nothing to do, why not I become an addict? Because that's just how it goes, right? So I become this addict now, because I always drank my whole life, never stopped drinking. And I became this addict, I've been getting in a lot of trouble. What happened? I had some kids from being an addict, I had married some people from during my addict stage. And, uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to um, So listen, um, and so I started going through this process of I'm just clean. So I get clean for a year. I get clean for five years, but then I relapse. And the reason why I relapsed is because I didn't have um I didn't have a spiritual awakening. I just wasn't using drugs. You know, I wasn't sober. I just wasn't using drugs and liquor. I just wasn't using. I was miserable, right? Um, so eventually, I, I, I received that spiritual awakening. And this is um this is listen. Trust me. This is um. Listen, when I'm at the height of my career, you know, I don't want to make this long, but listen, at the height of my career, I got, what, 40 million in the fire, I'm doing this, I'm going, I got boats, I got plans, I got everything. But they wouldn't touch me, a cartoon wouldn't touch me with a million foot pole. Now I got the number one cartoon on television. I got um, an Emmy, I got a Golden Globe. This is ridiculous stuff, I don't believe this is true, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got, um, I'm not perfect yet, but I'm just trying to get this stuff on track, and, um, I'm taking, you know, I'm sober. By being sober, I'm able to um, show up for my children. Um, I'm able, they're able to go to the best schools in the country. I got a daughter that graduated from First George, what is it, George Washington, that's in D.C. Then she went to Georgetown. Now she's in Drexel. That's Philadelphia somewhere, right? Well, she, she's in Drexel now. I got a daughter. My, yeah, my, eight, my 19 year old is in NYU. She's a um, director and stuff. I have this other young kid, he's trying to go to, um, where's he trying to go? This guy, he's a character. He's, I have an 18-year-old son that me and him, you know, we, 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 we crash. We, we, we just don't get it. Something's wrong there. I don't understand that yet. Um, I, I'm going to need some advice from some older people, but something's just not happening here. Um, and um, I'm just very um, grateful that my kids are able to go to these schools, and sometimes they tease me because I don't spell as well as they spell. And um, I'm not advanced scholastically as well as they are, but um, I'm just happy that I'm able to put them in that position, you know. And I just wish, uh, and they give me a hard time because they think I'm, they think because I do this, they think I'm do that, they think I'm, I'm 
would show up, but the fact that if they had my parents, then they would really have something to talk about. I wish he had my father, because my children, believe it or not, I have a 27, they've never, they never received a beating before. I received beatings just by looks. I can remember being in um, Royal Farms. See, they don't have Royal Farms. You guys remember Royal Farms, right? Real cheap. Um, just had being beaten in the corner because my mother couldn't afford something. And um, I'm just really um, grateful to be here talking to you. And even though I got sucker punched being the keynote speaker at this time, I have a really, um, I'm really grateful for my life now. I'm really grateful. I'm really, um, Just by, um, just by the grace of Allah, I just was able to just do this because I chose I was going to be different. I wasn't going to live that life anymore, and I was going to be um, the person I wanted to be. And everything I was doing in my past life, you know, I was champion, but that prevented me from being the man that I wanted to be. And um, I, could, I could pretty much say I'm on, a, I'm, on a, I'm, on a, I'm on a course of being the person I want to be. Um, I have dignity, I have self-respect, and anybody just look at me and see what I'm doing.